week. Nice. Uh, that's five straight Washington wins in the 1500 mile a week. Can you wrap your head around it? How's that feel? No, that's a hard one to get get your head wrapped around. But uh, yeah, super excited for Joe. Yeah. How did like the race play out? Did that play out how you expected it? Like, what were you thinking going in? Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't it didn't seem like anyone was going to take it. At least those first couple of laps and. Uh, and then I think everyone wants to try to like get control of the race like at a certain time, or at least I thought there'd be like three or four people that would try to want to get in control of the race by 600 meters. So um, I think it's just, I mean, I'll have to go back and watch, but I think a lot of people were just putting in some good moves to try to get to the front or take control of the race. So, um, and then that last lap, it was just like, it was like a boxing match. It felt like just people were just, uh, just going as hard as they could, trying to trying to get to the front. So, did you tell him to sort of, or all your guys, Luke yeah, yeah. and Nathan, did you tell them sort of to respond when the race kind of made those moves? And yeah, I mean, I I thought just because I thought positioning was going to be so important, it seems like those that have been in good position have have won. Um, and so, we I just wanted my guys a lot further up with a lap to go and just give themselves a chance, give all three of them a chance to to try to win. Um, and I think I think they all were towards towards the front. I think with with a lap to go and um, yeah, three different outcomes. But uh, but yeah, super happy. Like I said, for Joe. How much did it remind you of that 2022 race? Because it seemed like that was the same exact way it finished when he just went around the, the bend and, oh. in the home straightaway right here at Hayward. Yeah, yeah, it was probably probably some similarities. Just a much much different feel. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think um, probably Joe and Luke are the only returners from from that from that race, but. Um, yeah, certainly. I mean, you got to run a good, good last lap to win, and um, it, was, it was Joe today. If you look at his results this season on paper, he wouldn't have come yeah. in as the favorite. But he said he talked to the prelims. He had been running the best workouts of his life. He felt like. Where do you see in practice from him coming into this? Yeah, practice has certainly been good. Um, yeah, we haven't had a lot of great, great results. Um, Pac-12 has started to see everyone click a little bit. Like they, we weren't getting wins, but they're executing well and getting the points that we needed at, at Pac-12s. But uh, yeah, there was, there was, you could hear some chatter at, at, at practice. It, there was, you know, a bunch of kids on the team that were kind of like, Joe's going to take this one. Even, even, you know, I think people just started talking like, okay, Joe, it's Joe's turn. And I don't know if it's because it was just his turn because he hasn't won in a while or um, if he's just been looking good in practice. But, um, yeah, I think I think everyone was super happy. For Give us the details. What did he see in practice that might make people think it's going to be oh, You know, they all they all run together and they, they finish they finish different um, you know different things at the end. But yeah, I think I think he's just was feeling good and finishing strong and all and all the workouts and. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think he was confident. And I, I don't know, sometimes you start carrying yourself a little bit differently when you're feeling good. And, and yeah, he was carrying himself very confidently. And I think, uh, yeah, he definitely thought he had a good chance of winning today. But their this, final reps, they will run separately in practice? Yeah, towards the, end of the, towards the end of the season. I want them all to think that they can win. Um, and I think, I think for me, it's like they end up doing a lot of similar things. Um, you know, I kept them together for three years. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I've ever had three guys make three finals. Um, and they really do like each other. Um, they're good friends. Um, the last few weeks, it was like, okay, they were all starting to feel really good. Um, and it's Olympic year, and you got Olympic trials and all that stuff. And so, um, I guess that's where it's nice to have a team. I just started like, you know, I would take a freshman like Thomas Diamond. I'd be like, hey, you just lead these three guys. Whatever Thomas wants to lead for the rep, let's just let Thomas lead, or let's let Sam Affolder lead. And so, I would just have other guys kind of help, kind of lead the reps, and then just so they could all feel confident, just like if it's 4-3-2 at the end or 6 two hundreds or whatever it is at the end of practice, just kind of let them all do it, you know, on their own. So then, you know, they're finishing practice and they're feeling good about what they accomplished individually. And, hey, I had a little bit more in the tank, you know, or whatever it is, let them all think that they that they have a good chance, chance to win. This has been a really impressive string of results over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it kind of takes your evaluation of these guys, bringing them in in the first place. I mean, what do you yeah. see... And guys like Joe, Nathan, Luke, and, and this distance group, how do you bring guys in? What do you want to see out of recruits? And then how do they build toward that vision that you're ultimately creating there? Yeah, I mean, I think I think the first thing is they just they have to be about the team. And that's, that's kind of, as the older I get, the more I'm finding, like, they have to really, like, be into the team concept and the team culture and about trying to help each other out and make make people around you better um, like I think I think when you have people that are all kind of collaborating like that that's when that's when you start getting really really good results so 
Um, now, not all athletes come from from good teams, so you just have to make sure they understand that and that they can buy buy into that. And so, that's something I carefully kind of kind of look at. And then, um, obviously, you have to have talent, and, and you want you want to see some see some good times. But um, yeah, just really fortunate that both um, both Joe and Luke were in our backyard. Like they, they're literally like 10 miles from campus, and they used to race each other in high school. And, the only reason I, I saw Luke is because I was recruiting Joe, and I go to a race and I see Joe, and then you see Luke like take him to the line. And, that guy's really good, um, and so yeah, and then just all three of those guys coming together. I think we have some some good ones coming in, and some good guys are currently on the team too. That hopefully we can. The streak's going to end at some point. Um, it's it's definitely taking a toll on me, but um, it'll end at some point. But we'll still, whether it, whenever it ends, it'll end. But we'll still, I think, always have a good stable of, of middle distance and distance runners here. Of these five.